I'm here to save China. <laughs> I'm stupid, I'm sorry. Hi, hi everyone, I'm Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay. I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup so you can become the character of your dreams. It's been a hot minute since I've had to say that. I'm really sorry that it's taking me a long time to upload an actual cosplay tutorial. Hey! Today's cosplay tutorial is as listed in the title down below, Mulan. I wanted to make Mulan for a long time. I've done several of her costumes. I want to remake a few of those costumes because they're not so good. But this is one of the ones that I've been wanting to make for a long time. This is the one that she comes back from her house and it's the green kimono with the yellow dress underneath, with the blue sash, with the orange tie. In this video, you'll learn how to make the kimono top, the waistband, center sash, and maybe the belt if you need help with the belt. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am a cosplayer of 15 years plus, maybe. <laughs> I've been cosplaying for a long time, so make sure to click that red button down below to never miss out on any future cosplay content, sewing content, fashion content, and I will get you guys going in the right direction. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in a comment or feel free to hit me up on my social medias. Let's go ahead and start the transformation time. I'm going to be starting with the easiest part and that is the waist tie and it is this orange taffeta that I got in Los Angeles. This is stretch taffeta, you can see it's super stretchy, you don't have to make it stretchy. What you want to do is measure out a nice length for your tie and just cut straight down the fabric. I'm going to make sure that this is really thick and I'm going to fold it over and sew it creating a nice long tube and there is your tie. So I sewed it into a tube then I flipped it inside out and then I ironed it down so it looks nice and flat. Just wanted to add that little detail in before we say that it's done so your raw edges aren't showing. The fabrics that I will be using for Mulan is the same blue non-stretch taffeta from my Tifa and Snow White cosplay. I'm using this nice light green satin I got from Boon Su Sena here in Kangen's Lupu. I have this leftover green fabric I was going to use for something else. I got this from my friend Larni. She is super awesome. Check her out in the description box down below. And then of course I made this a while ago. It's just an orange long rectangle sash. We just need to now make sure we iron our fabric. Um, oopsies. So originally I was going to use this pattern for this vest part and then cut it up but then I started looking at this belt part which is C and it's just kind of tiny it only goes like about this much. So I want something a little bit more covering so I'm going back to my favorite pattern aka 506. Yeah literally 5006 and I think I'm just going to cut off the booby part line and then go from there and just use the waist cincher part. Now you're probably wondering do I have any waist cincher actual patterns. No, but that will be okay. So I'm just going to take this out and pin it down. This time I'm actually going to use it multiple times, so I'm going to make this one pretty strong. Now I'm just going to cut this out completely. I also want to note that I want to make this reversible, so I'm going to cut this out yet again, and I'm going to use a different fabric you'll see in a second. Kind of fast forwarded because you've seen me use this pattern before. I made two layers this time and the fabric I used of course is this taffeta but I decided to have a nice reversible effect so I'm using this really thick, I don't know what this is, but it's a really thick fabric with this velvet embossing. So I made two of them and then I'm going to sew them together at the bottom and the sides once I'm happy with that. Maybe I'll do a basting stitch at the top too. And then I'm gonna chop off the booby part area and then maybe I'll recycle that into something else. But first let's go ahead and put these two pieces together without any of the boning and lining because we need to flip that inside out. And now I'm going to sew it down. Just wanted to show you guys where we're at at this process. 
You can see I pinned my corset onto my dress form so I can actually see where I need to cut off the top. I'm thinking I'm going to save the top and create it into like a nice little crop top, bustier kind of thing, or maybe add more to the bottom to create it into a teddy. So this yellow chocolate ribbon is, <laughs> it's actually a chocolate company. This chocolate ribbon is actually going to be where I cut off and then I'm just going to match it to the other side because everything's perfectly symmetrical. Make sure that you check all places first before cutting and that it's nice and straight. Here we go. So for me, I think... Okay, oh, scary part is done. Terrified. I'm just gonna flip it over onto itself and then pin it down and then cut the same exact cut that I went. You'll notice that this isn't a straight line and that's because this is going to curve to the body. So yeah, I'll just cut off the bottom seam, flip it inside out, and then top seam on top of it. Or top stitch on top of it. That way it's nice and strong and I just don't have that problem. But still, make sure you just like snip your corners. Like that. That way it pulls nicely inward and you don't have any problems. I think I will just go ahead and cut off this bottom salvage edge here now. So, this is where we're at now. I went ahead and added my zip ties. Do -do -do. I did it for both sides. So there's these lines here and then there's these lines here on the other side. So all sides actually have their own zip tie, super boned kind of way. So you can see that it's super good. Now what I did was I went ahead and did a basting stitch across the top. That way everything is still symmetrical, holding the zip ties in. Now I'm going to take a piece of lace. I'm going to have this lacy side go on the other side and act as a bias tape to secure the top. I don't want to lose any more of this. So I'm going to sew it down on this side first with the bottom edgy part here. And it's just going to act like a black line. And then the other side is going to have this scallop edge and look really pretty with this design. So let's go ahead and sew it down and add it to this corset piece. Now we're going to take the lace that we sewed on one side, fold it over, and secure it down with a new stitch on top. So it will look like this. Isn't that nice? And then this side will just have a nice black line. Now that this is complete, I'm just going to add some eyelet holes here on the back panel, making sure I can lace the waist and shirt through, and then we will be done. I will go ahead and use my button hole maker to make some eyelids so it's more natural and not so metal and it's still going to create this to be reversible. This is what my completed button hole looks like. It's sewn together still and you can see the little strings. Instead I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to go ahead and just open this hole in the middle between the stitches. You don't want to go too fast because you might actually rip through all of it. So slowly push through to the other side of the seam and just open it and ta-da! You now have a hole for the tiniest button. But now you can see this is how you create a buttonhole. Oh yeah, don't forget to cut off these little extra edges. If you have any questions about this, let me know in a comment down below. If you have any problems, feel free to message me on social media. And if you don't want to leave a comment, I understand. But could you at least give a like to this video? I don't know what I'm doing. I just feel so psychedelic because actually I wanted to use the reverse side of this green fabric and I didn't. I just saw shiny and I was like, I'm drawn to the shiny. What can I say? So before we get into this kimono top that we're going to be making, I just wanted to address that I will be using this dress that I picked up a long time ago in Los Angeles when I lived there as my undergarment that's going to be my skirt and the yellow top. I know it's not completely accurate, but I figured this would be so much more fun to wear underneath it all. And if I get really hot, I can take off the kimono top, not have to worry. That really is different from my original plan, which was going to be wearing the bunny suit and the snow white skirt. But now I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead and get into making this kimono top. As I want my collar to be primarily kind of thick, I'm going to go with a six inch um, cut. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out and then mark all across the way and make my nice little collar piece. So from the edge here, six. I continued all the way down the fabric marking it and then I'm going to cut that out. This will allow me to have a very long strip causing it to be my nice collar facing or my collar. This fabric frayed so badly that I had to make sure that I surged the edges. Then I went ahead and created it into a tube. I'm gonna keep this in the tube the way it is and not flip it inside out because I'm going to be using this as somewhat of like a bias. You'll see in a bit. I didn't want to seam at the top of my shoulders, so I opted to make the top out of one solid piece of fabric. I measured my shoulders and I used that measurement, which is 17 inches with seam allowance. The length of my of how far I wanted my kimono top to be was around 23 inches if you included the curve of the shoulder, which is extremely important. We aren't flat like paper, you know. You're probably wondering, will this fit around my waist to close the robe? Honestly, you're not supposed to close this one, so it's okay if it does not close at all because that's actually very accurate for it not to close. I cut off the excess fabric for the top using the measurement of the length that I wanted. I made sure that it was folded over as well. So for me, it was 23, so I folded it over, making sure I still had 23 on the fold, and then I cut off the salvage edge and the remaining excess, if that makes any sense. While I have it folded, I make a mark at the middle point. This is going to be where my neckline is, and that is super important. Now fold it lengthways. Finger press down the fold all the way to the point that marking that you just made and cut all the way up that fold. This is going to become the front piece. While it's folded over at that marked point, I cut out a half moon shape for my neck. I don't need a full circle cut out because it's not going to be a choker. Make sure this is on the side that is folded over and not cut all the way up. This is your back side. So go ahead and cut out that moon shape and this is going to change for everyone. I made sure mine was a nice little scoop neck because I have a small neck. I'm actually just a small human in general. For the rest of the front opening, we are going to cut off the triangles of the front opening at the top of the neck. This is going to open it up and create a very nice long shape. I didn't know what else to say. You can see this is the type of shape that you want. It's an extremely long right angle kind of triangle. Quote unquote, yeah, let's just go with that. Now you can sew the sides together, causing you to have a nice tunic. I made sure to sew down the sides and serge them as well. It's super important because my satin frays so badly. So now what I'm gonna do is attach the collar piece and use it kind of like a bias tape to envelop the edges of the front facing and the collar part. I meant the neck part. I'm going to use the middle point of my collar and the middle point of my tunic to start where I'm going to add my collar. So with that little point that might happen at the front side, go ahead and just pin it straight across and you shouldn't have any problems. Now I went back and ironed this to make sure I had a good fold. So now I'm just gonna go over and sew down the top part just like a bias tape, encasing all of the raw edges that we don't want to see. And of course I'm pushing the raw edges into the folded collar piece. For my sleeves, I basically took the folded remnants that was left and I cut just like long rectangles off of it and then I sewed them all together at the sides. I made sure that this wasn't too big by kind of just using the shape of my hand against my hand and <laughs> making sure it was just bigger than that, but not too big. For the length of my sleeves, I measured out the entire length of my arm and used that, making sure that I did keep it at the fold first and then went all the way down, cutting off the excess. Once I made two of these, I brought this to the sewing machine, sewing down the long sides on both sides and serging them because this fabric frays way too badly. So that created this giant pillowcase kind of thing. So then I cut open the fold. I'm putting right sides together and pinning the sleeves to the tunic. My fabric frayed so much during the step, so be careful if you're using something that frays this badly.
Now all that's left is to cut off the salvage edge of this collar piece that's on both sides and then hem the bottom. I just did a fold over hem on that and then hem the sleeves and I just did a fold over hem on those as well and then your tunic is completed. Hooray! Feel free to cut off any wispies that happened to come out while you were surging as well. love this cosplay and not only is it super comfy to wear like I just can get in it really easily it's very quick and it's soft and I don't sweat in it it's not difficult to be in one thing that I am a little disappointed is the dress underneath is actually a little bit short for my taste but that's okay it's okay you know sometimes it's easier to walk with a shorter skirt than have a longer skirt so it's kind of a positive if you look at it in that light also like I know that this isn't a fully 100% made from scratch cosplay, but having a found item is really good for cosplaying if you're not like not good at sewing or if you're a novice at finding things. It's okay to modify something for your costume. And I just wanted to prove that point. See, even my cosplay looks amazing. Even though this top part looks like pajamas. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to become Mulan. If you have any other Mulan suggestions, leave a comment down below. If you have any other Disney characters you would like to see, let me know. And give a thumbs up if you think I can become the hero of China. Actually, I'm not Chinese, so it doesn't make any sense, does it? Cool. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out some of my other Disney videos up here floating by my head. And remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye! Really, really looks so different. Like, I can't even stop staring at myself. My god. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> ah!